Hi there. Today in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I would go about recreating a, a JPEG image in Inkscape. Now this is um, a, a logo file for a member of a Facebook group that I'm in. And for whatever reason, they've lost the original or they don't have the original vector file. So I said I would try to do a tutorial on how I would go about recreating this. So here goes. My first step in this process was trying to figure out what font this was. So I went uh, into Chrome, I went to a website called myfonts.com slash what the font. And if you're not familiar with this, basically what it does is it allows you to drag an image file into their uh, into a window on their website. It will try to identify the font for you and give you a list of the results. Uh, it came back with Trajan Pro Bold as a, as a match. And to me that looked pretty good, so I just Googled that. And on fontsgeek.com it had that font, so I just downloaded that and installed it uh, as you would any other font. Uh, and then I restarted Inkscape. So in Inkscape, I should now have that font installed. Uh, so I'm gonna go about recreating this. I'm gonna start with the text. So I'm just going to hit the T for the type tool or the text tool. Click to start typing and I'm gonna type in Bonita Bay. And then what I want to do is I just drag that over to the bottom left of that text and just click this handle, hold control to constrain it. And I'm just trying to resize it so I get approximate height of the text of the, of the shorter letters specifically. So that's pretty close. Now what I need to do is I need to go and upsize the, the first B in each word. So I will just select just that one. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to use um, the bold option for this typeface. So I'm just click on bold. There we go. The height didn't change much, so I'm still going to leave that. But I'm I am going to go back now and select just the B, and I'm going to go 290. I think that was pretty close. Yeah, and I'll do the second B, size 290. And then the next thing I want to do is since the spacing and the letters is all off, is I'm just going to select everything. And for some reason, my spacing set at 8.29, so I'm just going to set that back to uh, zero. It's still far off, so I'm going to go and adjust every letter individually. So I'm just going to click to the left of the letter that I want to adjust, and I'm going to start on the left side of the word, just like you would read it. Because if I started at the end and started matching up my spacing, as soon as I started adjusting the letters that uh, starting at the left, it would just mess up everything I did on the right-hand side. So starting at the left, I'm just going to use Alt and the spacebar key. Uh, or this uh, alt and the arrow keys rather sorry about that to uh, move these letters over one at a time so I'm just holding alt using the left arrow key Inkscape sometimes has a curious habit of when I hold alt and press left it sometimes it actually jumps the letter to the right to start with for whatever reason you might see that here it might not do it now that I've mentioned it that one actually jumped quite a bit to the right even though I just wanted to go slightly to the right And so I just um, adjust the kerning for each letter, basically, so it overlaps the original image nicely. And I'm not going for precision here. I'm just going to try to do a quick approximation uh, uh, recreation of this logo. You could spend a lot more time cleaning up every little detail. So I'm happy with that text. I'm going to just click down here, create another text element to do the club. Type club, hit escape to get out of that. The select tool. Again, the bottom left and resize while holding control to get the approximate height. I don't know if this one's bold. I don't think it is. I'm just going to move it over. And I'm going to actually change the color of this a little bit just so it's a little easier to see what's going on. Pretty close with that. Um, now, again, the spacing's way out. So I'll just click in there, select everything. I think I'm going to bump this up to, say, 80. And that's pretty close. That's a good starting point. So now I'll just use Alt and the arrow key again to adjust each letter individually. Pretty good, just like that. Let's get back to the Select tool, get out of that. And uh, so I'm pretty happy with the way the font's looking. Now I'm going to go in and try to reproduce these swooshes here. So for that, I think I'm going to use the Bezier Pen tool. And I'm just going to click on the starting point there, one of the points. I'm going to zoom out, move the canvas over, zoom back in, 
click on that second point. And I'm, at this point in time, I'm going to hit enter to commit that. Now, nothing really shows up because what do I have? An opacity of 75. I want to change that to 100. And I'm going to shift click on this black swatch to give that a stroke so I can see something on the path. That's a little thick for what I'm going to try to do here. So I'm going to use control shift F to bring up my fill and stroke dialog box. And I'll change that to say 0.5 millimeters. And that's good. So I'll close that window down. And now I'm going to use F2 to get to my node editing tool. I'm going to select both of the nodes on that path. And I'm just going to hit the plus button up here at the top left on the tool controls to insert a new node. And that just pops a new node right into the middle of uh, the two nodes that I had selected. So with just that one node selected, I'm just going to drag that up. Oh, and you can see I've got a fill on this path. I don't want that. So I'm just going to uh, click on this X down here to get rid of that fill. Now this node, again, with it selected, I want it to be symmetrical, I think. So I'm just going to hit this button up at the tool controls to make it symmetric. And then I'm going to drag each uh, the handle out until I get pretty close to the shape. Now, what I do on one side, uh, it does the exact opposite on the other side because it's symmetrical. So if, if I leave this node right here, I'm never going to get a, a perfect curve match there. So I'm just going to drag this over a little bit, sort of split the difference. and maybe just a little bit more and something oh something like that now i'm not going to get too hung up on making these perfect like i said i don't want to spend all day resizing and adjusting node handles so with that pretty close i'm just going to use control d and keyboard to duplicate that spacebar to bring me my select tool back and i'm going to shift arrow key just to move it down a bit um Let's see, what do I want to do here? I'm just going to move it down, actually. I'm going to use those arrow keys just till I get that midpoint lined up right above there. And then I'm going to go back to my node edit tool. And I'm just going to click this end node on the left. And I'm going to drag it up so it snaps to the first node that I drew. And I'm going to click on the end node on the right and drag that up as well so it snaps. And then I'm just going to adjust this midpoint just slightly and adjust the node handles. And that's pretty close. I'm, I'm happy with that. So what I want to do, I think, at this point in time is I want to just uh, combine this into one solid shape. Right now, they're two individual paths. So with the node tool still selected, click on the top one, shift click on the lower one, and then I'm going to drag a lasso handle around that endpoint. Sometimes it's kind of weird. It, it actually disappears that. Don't let it throw you off. They are selected. I'm going to go join selected nodes. And now it's taken those two nodes and joined them together. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Click the Join Selected Nodes. And now I have, if I just go uh, to my Select tool and click on that, I have a path, four nodes. So I have one solid path. So I can just give that a fill of some random color. And I'm just going to Shift click on the X to get rid of the stroke. So like I said, you can see that some blue in the background. It's not perfect, but it's close enough for my purposes right now. I'm just going to duplicate that, Control-D, bring that down to this other one here, resize it a little bit, oh, not not move it, resize it, drag the handle in, maybe give it a slight rotation, you know, that's a little bit further off than I thought it was going to be, so I think what I'll do is I'm just going to go in and I'm going to edit these nodes, perhaps rather quickly, just to get it a little bit closer. And this, this can be kind of fiddly. You're probably going to end up spending a little bit of time with this. I'm not going to spend much more here. Oh, just this bottom one. It's so tough to leave it when it's not that close. Okay, that's good enough for this video. So now I have everything except for the sun. So let's... Um, Let's create that before we move on and deal with uh, the stroke around these swooshes. So I'm just going to use the ellipse tool. And I'm going to click approximately in the middle of the circle. And I'm going to drag it out while holding Control and Shift to center it around the starting point And also keep it constrained to a circle. I'm going to let go when I get to approximately the size I want. Um, make sure I don't have a stroke on that. So I'm just going to click Shift click that X. And change the color a little bit. And I'm going to go down, actually, I'm going to change the opacity to, say, 80, so I can see the circle in the background. Uh, so I've got my Select tool selected. I'm just going to 
use my arrow keys to move that circle around. I'm actually going to go to a slightly different color. Let's try a green and drop the opacity down even more. You know what? I should probably use something like, uh, let's use a red. No, that's still pretty darn bright. A less solid color. I'm just trying to see a little bit of contrast. But you know what? I can see down below here that I've got pretty much a circle close to the same size as the original. So I'm going to be, I'm going to say I'm happy with that. I'm going to change my opacity back to 100 and I'm going to call that done. So I've got the overall structure in place. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to knock out or delete the bottom of the circle that hangs below the swoosh. It's pretty simple. I have the swoosh that goes through the whole circle. So I can just duplicate that swoosh, shift click on the circle and control minus to do a difference operation. And then if I go into outline mode, control five, and I just, I'm just gonna drag this out of the way quickly. You can see that I've, I've cut or difference that swoosh part out of the circle. So I've, I'm left with an upper and a lower path, closed path. So what I can do on that, uh, I'm gonna control Z to move the swoosh back in place first. But if I click on that circle and I use control shift K, that breaks it apart into its sort of unique uh, isolated segments. So I'll just click off that, then click back on the bottom and simply hit delete there. So now I'm gonna go control five back to my normal viewing mode. And you see, I just have the top part of the sun, but if I select all of this and just drag it out of the way quickly, you can see that there's this white stroke that sort of cuts through the sun and it cuts through the, the difference between the swooshes. So let's go work on that. Control Z to bring that back to where it was originally. I'm going to sh uh, click on the upper swoosh, shift click on, I'm gonna use a gray because uh, then I can, I can see it. It doesn't just blend into the white of the canvas. I'm control shift F to bring up the fill and stroke dialog box. And I'm gonna give that a, a bigger stroke, say three. Uh, I think that was pretty close maybe. Let's go with four millimeters, and that's pretty close to what the original was. Um, I'm gonna also change the order. Uh, this is how it probably defaults. So it shows the fill stroke, the fill first, then the stroke over top of that, and then the markers. So I actually wanna have it so that the stroke is at the back, then the fill is over top of that. And so that leaves me with my, uh, sort of a good visual of where what size my original swoosh was. So I'm gonna just, um, with that, such as that, I'm gonna duplicate this swoosh Control shift C to convert that stroke to a path. And then I'm going to shift click on the circle and control minus to do a difference operation. So what I've done is I just, I just cut out the area where this stroke was out of the circle. So I'm gonna have a gap there when I remove the stroke from the swoosh. So I'm just with the swoosh selected, shift click on the X and there we are. Now I've created that little gap in between there. So now this um, lower swoosh overlaps the top one and it creates a gap with uh, the stroke perimeter or per stroke size. So I'm going to raise that up to the top. Oh, it doesn't have a stroke yet. So let's just shift click on again. I'm going to use a gray control shift F. I could have done this all at once since, uh, as I did it with the top stroke, but I'm doing it individually, I guess the, the longer way with a four millimeter stroke. I'll close that dialog box down and I'm, I have yet to duplicate this, don't I? Yeah, so I wanna duplicate that. Actually, you know, for this step, I'm just gonna shift arrow key my duplicate down so you can see what I'm working on here. So control alt C is gonna take the stroke and convert it to a path. So there you go, it knocks out um, the filled area because now the path is just the stroke boundary. So with this guy here, I'm gonna shift click, remove the stroke. And now I'm gonna move this back up into place with the shift and the arrow key. And I'm going to shift click the upper swoosh and control minus for a difference operation. And there we are, I have that stroke knocked out of that upper swoosh. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, I have all the elements in place. Let's just go move on to the coloring now. So I'm just basically going to um, select everything except for the Bonita Bay text. And then I'm just going to shift click on that. And I just did that because if I drug uh, a bounding box around the whole thing, I would have selected the background image, uh, which I don't want. I want to just move this off say, to the left of the canvas here. You know what? I don't have to shift click that. I'm just going to drag that over. Down there, something like that. 
So now let's go get these colors. So I'm just going to click on the Bonita Bay text. I'm going to use the little uh, eyedropper or the color picker tool. So I'll click on that. I'll click on somewhere in the B. There we go. Hit spacebar to go back to my select tool. So the spacebar toggles between uh, your two most you or your two most recently used tools. So I'll click on the club spacebar again to get me back to that selection color selection tool. A spacebar again to click on the sun. Spacebar again to click on the original sun. Spacebar to click on the swoosh. I'm going to shift click on the lower swoosh. Spacebar again to bring up my color picker and the top. I don't know if these be uh, these um, swooshes and the text are the same color blue. But if they were, um, I could have just done those swooshes and the text together. So I'm just going to select all of that. I'm just going to group it so when I move it around, it is the same. Or it's, it's the same. So it moves together. Sorry for my incoherent talking. And there we are. That is how I would go about uh, recreating this logo. Yeah, you know, a couple subtle differences. This club uh, is a bit thicker. Um, these swooshes aren't exactly the same, but they're they're pretty close. And like I said, you could spend a lot more time making it a lot more precise. But for the purposes purposes of this tutorial, that's it. So hopefully you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.